Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Sang Yun. Uh, I work at a uh, national, Korean National University located in Busan. And I have a uh, co authors, Jinu Kim and Kyuan Kim. Fortunately, Kyuan is here. Please raise your hand, Kyuan. Yeah, he's in a PhD student in mathematics and statistics at the Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, we switched here, uh, slightly changed our original title to uh, size based model for fish stock assessment, removing uh, Bayesian uh, surplus production model. Okay, motivation. Uh, the, lots of folks already uh, the mentioned about lack of uh, edge data. So uh, Korea also, we uh, suffer from a lack of edge data uh, for stock assessment. So one of the alternative methods is the, uh, uh, to use uh, body size because it is relatively easy and much less costly to collect those data. And today I would like to illustrate uh, our model using uh, data on Korean chum mackerel. Uh, very short biology uh, description, short description about uh, biology of chum mackerel. Longevity, uh, six years, and they are distributed around the Korean Peninsula. Uh, they uh, migrate uh, down to a... Uh, uh, the coastal area of Shanghai, China. Um, in terms of available data, uh, we have uh, yields from Hussein fishery and CPU data available from 1996 through 2017, and body length data available from 2000 through 2017, and body weights uh, available from uh, 2005 through 2017. Uh, we have two objectives. Uh, first one, we want you to develop length-based model from scratch, uh, given available data about the population. This work was completed. And second objective, we want to compare our model in performance with uh, well-known uh, size-based model, uh, multi-fan, or uh, stock synthesis. So this work is uh, ongoing. Uh, some history of link space models and our model. Uh, our model evolved from uh, uh, Cohen, uh, Fisherman, Doriso, Parma, and Quinn et al. And we extended the, uh, and modified the Quinn's model from scratch, implementing our model in ADMB uh, instead of using existing software. And as everybody knows, uh, multi-fan CL was developed by, it originated from Shinoji, Fournier, Fournier et al. And recently, uh, there's some uh, interesting uh, a model, uh, Lima, Lime, Lime, I don't know how to pronounce, uh, long name, length-based integrated mixed effects model. It was developed uh, by Rudd Rud and Thorne 2017. Uh, it looks attractive at first, uh, my impression, uh, it, uh, they argue, they accommodate their random variation in uh, parameter, growth parameters. But when I, after uh, the article, I found <laughs> they assumed many, many parameters to be known in advance that include uh, parameters in length age relationship, natural mortality, parameters in selectivity function, etc. So uh, after realizing uh, this part, I'm not quite sure how useful uh, this uh, model line could be uh, in uh, practical stock assessment. Okay, so uh, very short description about key assumption. Uh, we define uh, recruitment as age on fish. And uh, even though body length in statistics it is it's a continuous, continuous uh, variable, but it is treated as a discrete random variable. It is assumed to follow normal distribution. And uh, we assume the mean and variance of body length at recruitment were known in advance. So mu1 and sigma1 square uh, denote a uh, mean of the body length and variance of uh, body length at recruitment. Uh, but uh, the mean and variance of the uh, length at the sequent age groups were estimated in the model. Okay, uh, we don't know uh, the age of a uh, fish 
caught by fish residual survey, but we can at least imagine uh, AG structure. That's why I emphasize the word imaginary in color, and each box has a uh, length distribution over time, over a cohort, that length distribution uh, change. So uh, uh, by mortality, the height of length distribution shrink, and by growth, their shape shift to the right. Okay, this slide is a key slide, so it's not really hard, but I'd like to slow down uh, this slide. After that, uh, the other stuff is straightforward. Uh, our model describes the uh, growth process in terms of length, uh, mortality and growth as a probability of uh, uh, length. The first, length distribution and recruitment, I already explained probability of uh, length x at a recruitment age in given year y is the assumed discrete normal distribution whose parameters are mu1 and sigma1 square. And after mortality, at the end of the age A, uh, this probability uh, underwent exponential of a mortality term, natural mortality. M is a, what? The uh, fishing mortality of uh, length x and given you y. And then at one growth increment from an individual of length x to length L. So please, pay attention to a notation small x and large L. They denote length, but small x denote means length before growth. Large L, growth after growth. So it can be uh, considered viewed as a conditional probability, length L after growth, given length x before growth. And that is the assumed discrete normal distribution whose parameters mu uh, of a length x at uh, age a and variance of a uh, at age a. And finally, uh, after both mortality and growth, uh, we get a marginal probability length L, which means yeah, after growth uh, by summation of uh, probability of length x after undergoing uh, mortality times the conditional probability. Length L, again, before, or after growth, given small x, before a growth. And this uh, conditional probability, simply a joint probability of length L and length x, divided by marginal probability of x, small x again, before growth. So cancel this term, this term, we got uh, disjoint probability and summation of disjoint probability over x, we get marginal probability of x. And after get marginal probability of length L, and now this L becomes small x because it is, it can be viewed as uh, the length before another next step uh, growth. So steps two and four are repeated along the imaginary cord. So once you uh, understand this slide, uh, the other stuff is uh, straightforward. And we have a uh, growth uh, parameters uh, from Cohen, Fisherman, and uh, stochastic uh, Ludwig von Bartelant equations. And uh, function f, function g, function h, uh, I don't want to uh, show you a specific uh, function. Uh, function f and function g determine the uh, mean value of uh, body length x and variance of a uh, age a. And uh, it involves uh, a few parameters uh, parameters in red color, they denote uh, three parameters. And this parameter, sigma x square, that is from the, uh, this transition uh, equation from xa, so length x at uh, age a, to next age length. 
So from the, this transition equation, the variance term is a uh, x, x square. Okay, the other stuff is also straightforward. Uh, year and length fishing mortality. So uh, fishing mortality of the uh, length x given year y is a selectivity uh, a function times annual uh, fishing mortality. And selectivity, uh, the chum mackerel mainly caught by porcine uh, fishery. So we apply the logistic model. Logistic model has uh, two parameters say a gamma and L50%, so it is uh, treated as uh, three parameters, so it is denoted in red color. And annual fishing mortality is composed of Q, catchability times annual effort. And number of AGA fish at length X after mortality, yeah, again, straightforward. Uh, the number of uh, at AGA in year Y multiplied by uh, the probability of uh, body length X after undergoing a mortality. And catch at age and at length x in given year y, it is a modified Bernoulli equation considering a length x. And finally, you can get a biomass and yield by multiplying body weight. Uh, we had a total of 27 uh, free parameters and m. Uh, Q is the uh, catchability in fish mortality function, uh, gamma, L50, two parameters in the selection logistic curve, and uh, rho and sigma x squared, two parameters from the growth equations, and N1, 22 annual abundances uh, at recruitment uh, in 22 years. M, natural mortality, was not treated as a free parameter, but its estimate was found a kind of sensitive analysis. I show it uh, soon. And uh, some parameters are uh, treated as input values. I already told you uh, in the previous slide, uh, mean value of uh, length at recruitment and uh, variance of the uh, length at recruitment were uh, assumed to be known. And also uh, we treated the, uh, the parameters at the allometric uh, relationship between weight and L, there are two parameters, those values are given. And L infinitive, uh, the possible maximum of body length is also a given value. And we have here our objective function uh, by applying multinomial likelihood for our length frequency data in year Y. And we applied uh, log normal uh, likelihood for yield data. And uh, we take a negative local altitude and summation, and that is a, a total objective function. And D1, D2, data weights, they turned out to be uh, D1 uh, 0.05, D2 10.0. Okay, model validation. Uh, we checked the uh, gradients of objective function at uh, parameter estimates, uh, whether they are close to zero or not. Also, we checked the uh, uh, parameter estimates hit bounds of parameter domains or not. And also we compare the uh, fitted values and observed values. And also we uh, check the AIC in terms of the opinions of fit. And uh, we uh, found the uh, optimum uh, natural mortality value by checking AIC versus the uh, plausible different M values. So M turned out to be 0.15. And this slide shows a comparison uh, of the uh, fitted yield values and observed values. So uh, circles uh, indicate the uh, observed yield and line is the uh, uh, model fitted value. And uh, this is, uh, uh, shows the uh, uh, fit between a fitted length frequency versus observed length frequency uh, 2000, 2001, and so on, 2008. And the histogram indicates the data at length frequency. The line overlaid in the each panel, uh, it is a uh, model uh, values. Uh, overall, uh, the feed was good. And this next slide, uh, same story, uh, 2009, 2010, and so on, 2017. 
an estimation. Uh, uh, recruits and fish mortality rate and biomass. And uh, I'd like to uh, report here initially uh, the point uh, after considering year to year variability in uh, length uh, weight relationship, uh, we found the model improvement. So In the allometric relationship uh, between body weight and body length, we have two parameters. So aggreg aggregating those data over years, we have a common alpha, common beta. Okay, uh, but when we uh, separate, uh, separate the, uh, those data by year, uh, we'll get year specific alpha value and year specific beta value. So when we are considering that year to year variability, in uh, parameter estimates, the model improved. So this blue uh, broken line shows the uh, AIC uh, versus against the uh, M value. And this blue line is a lower than uh, black line previously shown. And new uh, M value turned out to be 0 0.11. And uh, in uh, estimates uh, model, uh, the, 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 estimates us there is a substantial difference in, in estimates between considering that yearly variability and ignoring it. So this is a, a blue line and blue line, blue line that indicate the uh, new estimate of parameters when we considered that yearly uh, variability. However, in uh, fixed values, there is a negligible difference uh, uh, between uh, considering that variability versus ignoring it. Um, the blue line, black line almost overlapped. And uh, in uh, predicted their length frequency, also there was a negligible difference. So I do not show uh, that uh, in the additional uh, slide. Okay, so ongoing work uh, with the uh, multi fan CL, second part. Uh, although uh, our model uh, and multi CL share some common assumption, one of the main difference is our model does not directly estimate age compositions in length in fishery catch data, whereas multi CL does. And although I admit uh, our understanding of multi CL is limited, we've, I would like to, we would like to uh, report here two problems. First problem, uh, when we apply the, uh, the theories of multi fan CL, uh, the age composition estimates. Uh, so this is the uh, length frequency data. So left uh, column is the length frequency data. And right column is the uh, estimate of age compositions in uh, the same year, 2000, 2001, and so on. Even though uh, macro longevity is uh, six years, and sometimes they live up to uh, seven years. Uh, in terms of good news of fit, in terms of good news of fit, the considering six age uh, classes were not, turned out to be inappropriate. So we are uh, forced to uh, consider five age classes only. And second problem, even with the uh, smaller age classes, we are not able to uh, always uh, estimate AG compositions using multi uh, CL theory. So in case of 2013, this is a uh, length frequency data. Uh, with this data, we are not able to find AG compositions. Okay. So um, this is the, uh, uh, the plan for uh, as a, the next uh, task. Uh, first work was uh, completed, but we want to implement process errors in growth parameters uh, to be fully uh, free of equilibrium assumptions. Um, in Tuesday, uh, the scientist here named uh, Richard McGarvey, he also uh, pointed out the equilibrium, the concern about equilibri equilibrium assumptions in length and age uh, by showing us some simple exercise comparing, uh, considering year to year variability versus ignoring the variability in allometric relationship parameters. 
we found their improvement in model performance. So that is a kind of good evidence. Uh, we must reconsider uh, uh, the equilibrium assumptions uh, must be reconsidered. So uh, the, in terms of next step, uh, we would like to uh, move toward the uh, state space approach. And second plan, um, I'm not uh, familiar with the uh, running uh, multi-fan CL or stock synthesis. So if one of you are uh, familiar with the uh, running that software, we would be able to quickly collaborate. So if you are interested, in, please uh, contact me by email or in person. Okay, acknowledgement, yeah. Uh, late Dr. Terry Quinn, uh, he visited my lab at May 2016. Uh, he helped uh, this uh, model, he helped me uh, with this model formulation. At that time, I took picture uh, and then the, he was flanked with my students and q -Han. at that time he was an MS student in my lab. And this work uh, was financially supported by National Research Foundation of Korea and data were provided by a Korea uh, National Institute of Fishery Sciences. And one of my graduate students, they helped me with the uh, drawing map. Okay, that's it, thank you. Okay, thanks, so um, do we have any questions? Yeah, Andre. Yeah, I was interested by the ability to estimate M from those data. Um, I've done fair numbers of simulations and M without age data from a length model is usually a problem. And I was really interested by your result where you changed the length weight regression and that changed the M estimate. And the reason I'm surprised about that is um, the only way in a length model like this that length weight affects predictions is in the catch weight data because everything else is in proportion. So the numbers just scale out. Um, I was, is that, essentially that would suggest that you're getting M from the catch and weight data. Is that where the information on M is coming from when you change the length weight regressions? That's something I've never done, but it, it, it was quite a surprise that it changed M as much as it did because it didn't change the fits. Uh, Regarding a, uh, adding uh, the data, only uh, the D1, D2, the, the, the data weight was a uh, for multinomial likelihood and uh, log likelihood of, of a, uh, the yield data. So setting aside, I did not really uh, add any kind of uh, additional data weight. That was, no, right, that was only uh, data weight. That shouldn't inform M then. What? I, I don't get it. So would you mind to elaborate? Essentially catch weight data is the, the, all your length frequencies are proportions, right? They're not in absolute numbers of animals landed. Is that correct? They're not, then you're, not, you're, you're, you're fitting to proportions, not to absolute numbers. Are you talking about the Length frequency. Length frequency. Ah, I see. Now I understand your point. Okay. Ah, you're right. I uh, the, use the uh, actual uh, the sample size. For example, the, can you read 3,000, uh, 9,000, 12,000, there are variably uh, uh, difference in sample size annually. So that's why I uh, just uh, uh, use the sample size as is instead of uh, uh, applying effective sample size for multinomial likelihood. Yeah, that's why you insight is, you're right. That's why uh, this, the difference between two uh, weights are huge. 200 times, <laughs> D2 was uh, 200 times greater than D1. The reason is that uh, instead of the uh, effective sample size, I use the uh, sample size as is for uh, length frequency data. That's a good question, I don't know. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I, I yeah. think further work looking at the data weighting uh, Kaplan workshop results would be quite useful because when I've done this, D1 is probably 0. 0.0001. Yeah. 
not 0 0.0. 0 0.5 would be enormously good data. Though, may I add more comment? Yeah. The, this is my understanding regarding uh, effective sample size and uh, this kind of data weight, uh, somewhat arbitrary, but anyhow, eventually our goal is to uh, get our numerical estimation to be stable and convergent. So um, as long as the, uh, I uh, get a uh, satisfactory uh, diagnosis in terms of a, uh, uh, the convergence stable estimation, I was happy. And also in our case, the sample size of length frequency data is very variable every year. So that's why I just uh, decided to use it as is. Okay. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, I have a question. So how, how uncertain is the catch data? And if it's fairly certain, it seems as though you're not fitting it very well. So did you consider adding some additional process variability in your relationship between effort and fishing mortality? I, uh, I use the uh, catch data as constant. Yeah. Okay, if there's no other questions, we'll break for coffee. <laughs>